Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Cooper Garage. Today, the Cooper Ford Mentor, the first unique model developed for the brand, starts its production, and we'll have the chance to see how it is assembled. But before that, let's see the last pre-booking campaign video of the Cooper Ford Mentor. If there is only one chance in a million, then why? If this dream is too big, if dreaming itself is not enough, then why? If it's impossible, if then why? If it's not just about talent, if luck also plays a part, if wanting it so badly still won't make it happen, then why? If there are more reasons to give up and to keep on trying, then why? And I am joined today by the Cupra CEO and the next year president, Wayne Griffiths. Hola, Wayne. Hola, Noah. Nice to see you again. <laughs> great to have you here. Welcome to the Cupra Garage. It's great. Thank you so much. First of all, congratulations for your new position. Only 48 hours left until you're officially appointed. And I feel very lucky because I'm maybe the first one I get to interview you. You're one of the first ones. So thank you. And tell us, how are you feeling? Obviously, um, it's a great honor for me um, to receive the, the offer to become president of SEAD. Um, I don't know whether you know, but it's not, it's not my first time at SEAD, actually. Uh -huh. I joined the company four years ago. I've been working as uh, vice president of sales and marketing, but the first time I was here was over 25 years ago. So for me, this is not a step in my career. For me, it feels now it's part of my, my destiny. It's an amazing challenge. Um, the news has been out a week now, but I've, been, I've received a lot of support from, from a lot of the team, from our union representatives, from the supervisory board. So I think um, off to a great start. We've got a great range of products, a great team. And I think my predecessors, um, whether that was Jürgen Starkmann, Luca de Meo, or, or Carsten Isensee over the last year, have let me, I've done a great job and given me a great basis. I can see it in your smile. You're, you're happy. And um, Wayne, only two days left. Uh, for you to become the, the president of SEAT in a very challenging year. How is mm -hmm. SEAT navigating these times and how do you see the future ahead? Yeah, well, up to the, the corona crisis, SEAT was the, the fastest growing brand in Europe mm -hmm. and everything was double digit growth. And obviously, we were hit by the crisis. We closed the production. Uh, but I'm happy to say now we're back full speed, full, at full capacity here in Materel, building 2,000 cars a day. Wow. Uh, we made sure all our people were safe. We tested them all, PCR tests for all 15,000 employees, which was very, very important for us. And, and I think that despite the crisis and the economic environment that that, that brings, I think Seat and Cooper are in the best position that when things get better, and they will get better, that we'll be in the best position. We're in the biggest product offensive of our history. We've launched a brand new Leon, the best mm -hmm. one in our history, invested one billion investment in this car. We've got a newer taker. And now we're here today for another highlight, the launch of uh, the Cupra Formentor, our first 100% developed car for Cupra. And what about the sales numbers? Sales numbers, uh, as I said, obviously it's been tough since uh, the corona crisis. But what I'm happy to say is that now in this month of September that we're closing now, we see that sales are actually back at the level of uh, the previous year, which was oh. record levels last year. So we're getting back to the high levels of, of the record years before. And the demand in fourth quarter, because of the strong product launches that we're doing, is, is very, very high. And we're quite confident, cautiously confident, uh, that things will pick up in, in, in the fourth quarter. Um, obviously, we, we have all these launches, and the biggest one now, the Cupra Formentor, uh, here in Materel. The car not only designed, developed, but also to be produced in Materel. Um, so I think it's a great step here today for all of us. I remember when last July in the press conference of Casa Seat, mm -hmm. that um, I remember perfectly, you said that Seat is a company with two brands. Mm -hmm. So how are Seat and Cumpra complementing each other? 
You're right. So Seat, a company, one company, two brands, two very strong brands, Seat and Cupra, uh, with um, distinctive target groups, with distinctive products, distinctive roles within the Volkswagen Group. Seat, the entry brand, the conquest brand for young people, on average 10 years younger um, than, than Volkswagen customers. And then we have um, Cupra as a new brand, we, the unconventional challenger brand from this fantastic uh, city of Barcelona, uh, very focused on design and, and performance and helping to move the whole companies of uh, center of gravity upwards, making our business more profitable. And how does the Formentor fit into this structure? The Formentor is probably the biggest step in, in our brand's history of Cupra, and Cupra's only two years old now, but I think with the, the Formentor, we are making the biggest uh, next step for, for, for Cupra. It's 100% um, developed as a Cupra model. Uh, I think it has all of the DNA of our, of our brand, and even some journalists have written that it's the, assessen, the essence of, uh, of the Cupra brand. Uh -huh. And I think it will help um, Cupra not only in terms of, of, of sales, obviously helping us on, on our target of, of doubling volume, but, but get new customers, um, make the brand more visible. We'll see more of the brand on the street and will help here in Matorel because the car's going to be built in Matorel uh -huh. and uh, we should be able to increase production here on the line that the Cupra Formentor is built by, 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 by 10%. We'll see it later. We will have the chance to see how it is assembled. I, I think you guys are really prepared for the future, but the automotive industry, it's also suffering a major transfer, uh, transformation. How is Seat and Cupra preparing for the electrification era? I think we're well prepared. We have a clear investment plan of um, 5 billion euros in, in new products, in new technologies, in, in, in R&D, and in the plant here in, in Matarel, and we're already well on the way to electrifying uh, our product range. We have five new electric and, and plug-in hybrid cars uh, models to be launched into the market up till, till next year. And, and our goal, obviously, is trying to get more new electric models um, for, for Matarel to electrify SEAT, to help electrify um, Spain, and that, that's the big objective, I think, that I will have uh, to achieve in my presidency here. And you will do it, I'm sure. <laughs> when I do my uh, best. <laughs> please don't go too far, okay? I see you only in a few minutes. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs>
the Cupra for Mentor production also requires the participation of more than 400 suppliers. All in all, the Cupra for Mentor represents more than 1.5 million additional working hours for Martorell and its workforce. Thank you so much, Alicia. The Foro Mentor is to be launched very soon, and I can't wait to drive this car. Speaking of which, we have a very special guest who is going to be the first to experience the Foro Mentor, and I think he is arriving at the factory to pick up his car, mm -hmm. who the very special guest might be. We'll find out shortly, so stay with us. And in the meantime, let's explore more things about this beauty. Cupra is about performance, and therefore the technical development is key to providing the customers an outstanding driving experience. Let's know more about the development process. The SEAD Executive Vice President for Research and Development, Werner Tietz, and Chief Technical Officer, Marta Almuni, met at a secret track to exchange their first impressions of the car. Let's check it out. So today I want to show you the 228 kilowatt Formentor, the brand new baby from the Cupra family. So first of all, you have to start the car and this is here on the steering wheel. As we have a nice track in front of us, I take the Cupra mode and you can also select it on the steering wheel. So, here we go. You feel this phenomenal acceleration. Hi, Marta. Hi. What a great car. I especially love the driving modes. Can you explain me a little bit about the modes? Yeah, what we made with this car is try to get the feelings on a compact. And uh, with the progressive steering, and the adaptive chassis, we have built up uh, three driving modes, Comfort, Sport and Cupra. Let's talk about the seats. You have a really good uh, guidance of, from the seats and the, this wraparound in the cockpit. The seats is something that we take a lot of care about. It's uh, one first step to bring the experience of the racing car to the serious car. The seat is the first contact between the driver and the car and it transmits the whole sensations of the road and so on. So we have been very careful. So what was the target for the design? Uh, here the design team has taken their vision of the Cupra and they have made the first auto 100% Cupra. But also uh, the concept team and the engineering team made a huge work then to put this vision of the design into reality. So the team has done a brilliant job and this is what we see now on the road. So now let's have another view on the car dynamics and I'm joined by someone who has already driven this car for hundreds of miles on the race tracks. Jordi Gené, he's the Cooper's official testing and development driver. Welcome Jordi. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you've been a very special and important part of the development process. So tell us how it's been like. Well, as a, being as a, a race driver and a developer, it's, uh, I, I, what I work with uh, for Mentor is uh, I give my feedback mm -hmm. in, the last, in the latest stages of the, of the development. Uh, by giving that, uh, my opinion in, uh, in items like steering wheel, uh, throttle position, seat wrap-up or suspension settings, uh, I test them in the circuit to find a tuning. By doing that on a, on a racetrack, we can uh, put the car to the extreme. So the feelings and the, the, the sensations we get are, uh, are in, the, in the limit of the chassis, so when the customers drive these cars on the road, they have an excellent feeling and we expect to, to, for them to enjoy it a lot. And Jordi, now a difficult one. In only a couple of words, how would you describe the performance of the Formentor? Well, it's difficult to say that, but uh, let's say in two words. Sportiness, mm -hmm. because it's a performance car, and uh, robustness as a SUV. So it's uh, difficult, but maybe these two words will, will define this car very well. Robustness and sportiness. Exactly. Both of them. So thank you so much, Jordi. I told Wayne not to go too far. Please stay with us because I'll see you later in the Q&A part, OK? Perfect. Thank you, Jordi. Gracias. So performance and technology are the main strengths of this model, but Cupra is also about sophistication and style. To know a bit more about the car's design, Let's connect with the design lab at Casa Seat with Francesca Sangali, head of color and trim concept and strategy. 
Francesca, hi again. Nice to see you again. What's your favorite part of the Formentor? Hi, Enoa. Um, first of all, I'm very proud that the team uh, has been able to come up with a design language that really express a new and progressive uh, definition of sportiness. And I think the market is really looking for this. Um, the character of the Cupra Formentor is, uh, is what I, I like most. It's a merge between um, the robustness of an SUV together with uh, uh, this uh, compact and, and um, uh, sporty uh, essence of an hatchback. Uh, the, the, the proportions of the Cupra Formentor are inspired by uh, the Cap Formentor in Mallorca. Uh, you, you see this uh, in the side blisters, for example. They are very, uh, this cultural feeling, uh, this tension uh, they communicate these blisters are um, somehow uh, delivering this idea of movement and dy dynamicity. And for sure, finally, the colors. Uh, the Cupra Formentor uh, has, uh, um, uh, is um, available in nine colors. Uh, which one will you pick? Francesca, I love the petrol blue matte color of the launch edition. That's my favorite. How have you designed and developed the palette of such a car? To design, uh, to design the colors for the Cupra Formentor took three years and more than 800 different formulations for the colors. The in main inspiration for the palette are based on the nature and uh, uh, the elements that belong to it. Uh, you find, for example, uh, the, the minerals or the stones, uh, the earth, are all elements of inspiration that we find it in, the, in, in the color. That's why, finally, in the palette, you find colors that are, um, they have a matte finish uh, or you know, deep, deep, deep uh, texture. Uh, and the colors are alive. And this, you see it a lot when the light shine on it. Um, and the Formentor has plenty of volume and surface and a sculptural attitude to, to really display the attitude of, of these colors. Thank you, Francesca. I leave you the design lab to keep working on the future designs, thanks. And now it's time to reveal who is this mysterious, very special guest who is going to drive the Formentor for the first time, precision, sophistication, and style are Cupra's values, but also shared by our guest. Ladies and gentlemen, Cupra tribe members, today with us, Mark Verstegen. So Mark is picking up his new Formentor right now, directly from the factory line. He will drive the car to the Cupra garage to share with us his first impressions behind the wheel. And we are really excited to have him here. In the meantime, let's learn a bit more about the car with Wayne Griffiths. Wayne, back again, thank you. I've been told this is a very special time for you. No, it's a special time um, for Cupra, for Seat, launching this fantastic new model, but a special time for me personally, because I have to admit, when I rejoined the company four years ago, mm -hmm. this was one of the first prototype cars um, I saw. And this car really convinced me that, that moving to Seat for me was the right personal move and that this company had a, had a great opportunity, a company that could do cars as good as the Formentor. And, and the thing that really thrilled me, the prototype is now actually the car that has come uh, to the series. I think it'll be the turning point for the Cupra brand. We'll establish uh, the Cupra brand and, and make the brand, I think, a lot more desirable. It's like destiny, no? More yeah, or less. <laughs> and it's incredible the way Cupra has grown. Like, how do you assess its evolution since 2018? Yeah, we launched the brand 2018. Back then, some people thought we were crazy. I think <laughs> launching a new brand when, at a time when a lot of brands were disappearing, but I think it was the right time, this, this disruptive time, the move to electrification. We saw a position in the market between the mass market and the premium segment where we could position the brand uh, Cupra. Um, I think the sales results up to now have really overmet all of our expectations. We've sold 55,000 cars wow. since launching uh, the brand. Last year we sold 25,000, which was a 70% growth. Um, and when we get the full range, as, as I said to you before, with the launch of the Formentor, we want to get to a 1 billion euro uh, turnover. And what's the reason for this success? And how is more or less the market responding to this special challenging year? 
You know, I think the reason for the success is that we've hit a hot spot in the market with our positioning, mm -hmm. a car for people who perhaps have not as much to prove, um, uh, some, some understatement, but a, a car clearly focused on design and performance, something new in the market. Um, the market we're seeing coming back, as you say, the market is, is bouncing back very much stronger in this part of the market than in the mass segment. So, for instance, the Jul month of July was the, the best month ever in the history of the Cooper brand already, despite wow. uh, the COVID. Yes. Uh, and August and September are, are very, very strong as well. Uh, with double-digit growth in one of our major markets, the German market, the Cooper Taker that we've just renewed has been launched successfully. And now, with the new Cooper Leon that we're launching and the Cooper Formentor here today, we're really confident and have great ambitions for the future. You went said once that the Cupra was like a make or break for the, for the brand. What is uh, this model representing for the future of the brand? I think it's the make or break. It's the first car 100% designed for the brand, mm -hmm. under the brand. Uh, I think it has all the DNA of what Cupra stands for in terms of design, in terms of performance. It's the essence, if you like to say, of the, of the brand. An important car uh, for the brand, but an also important car for Materel, as I said before, yes. designed here, developed here, to be produced here. And it's also the first brand to be homologated under, under the Cupra trademark and is a standalone model with, it, with its own position. Okay, we have the Cupra Ateca, which is the soup. Then we have the Cupra Leon. It is the sporty coupe. What about mm. the Cupra Formentor? Yeah, I think the Cupra Formentor is going to hit a hot spot in the market. We see the crossover segment, the crossover SUV segment, as the segment with the biggest growth potential for the, for the next five years, a, a market that, could, that could, could double in Europe over the next five years. And I think the Cupra Formentor, with a range of engines, with seven engines, from a diesel, a petrol, plug-in hybrid, and the 310 horsepower version we're launching today, I think a huge range of product that, that will give us a great, uh, great volume potential in the future. Something you've always said also is that you want Cupra to be a global brand. So what is the role of the Cupra Formentor in your international expansion? I think Cupra Formentor, first of all, will help us gain more relevance in Europe. Seat has already become the fastest growing brand in Europe with a market share of around 3%. I think now with Cupra and the, the volume basis that Cupra Formentor will give to the Cupra brand will help us make us even more relevant and stronger as a player in Europe but will also help us extend outside of Europe. And I don't know if you know, last year we, we started our, an extension plan in South America, in Colombia and Chile. Mm -hmm. And I think not only there will it help us to become stronger, but also help us perhaps enter into markets with Cupro, where up to now uh, with SEA there was no business case or it didn't make sense. Wow, that's, that's uh, an ambitious plan, it is. And for example, um, I know you have a Cupra garage in the German city of Hamburg recently, mm -hmm. and I want to know if uh, you expect to, we expect to see more Cupra specialized points of sales coming up, like yeah. we have Hamburg. Yeah, I, I know, I think you, could, you can expect soon. Uh, we, we started off in Mexico, Ciudad uh -huh. de Mexico, in the sí. Mexico City, it was a big step for us, opening the first Cupra garage worldwide. And we launched, uh, I think it was a week ago in Hamburg, our first flagship Cupra garage in Europe, mm -hmm. in, in the city of Hamburg, was very well um, received. And I see, and speaking to our dealer and dealer networks, there's a lot of interest out there to, to make this investment in an exclusive um, Cupra representation. I think the brand is strong enough now with the range of products we have, with the Cupra Teca, with the Cupra Leon, with the Cupra Formentor, with the volume basis that the, our dealers together with us can make this important step in terms of brand presentation. But there's another part that I, I would like to mention. It's not only the, the Cupra Garage, the environment, places like this that, that make the brand. I think people make the brand. And I think our Cupra Masters that, that will take care of, of our customers, they will be very important for, in the future. They will. And let's talk about business a little. Mm -hmm. What does the Cupra Formentor mean for the growth of the brand? I think um, the Cupra Formentor will allow us uh, to achieve our goal of doubling the sales very quickly now. I think next year we should be able to double um, our Cupra sales. Double. Um, and next year, double. I think the Cupra Formentor will 
have a big portion of that volume will be very relevant. So it will be over half of the Coopers we sell next year will be, will be Fomentor. And we'll give the whole brand a momentum for, for the new models that are then to follow. Because as you know, next year we're, we follow them very quickly or the, in the second half of the year with our first fully electric Cupra, mm -hmm. fil first electric battery electric vehicle from Cupra, the Cupra El Bon. And now the question everyone wants to know, Wayne, mm. when will we be able to see the Cupra Formentor in the streets? We're, we're really looking forward to it. <laughs> well, you saw one in the street today yeah, we with, did, uh, we did. with Mark on his way here. He's uh, coming. So that's the first one. Um, we are presenting the car to the press at the moment. Yes. I fly next week, uh, hopefully to Munich or well, ah. to, for the international press presentation. And then during October, we will see the market launch in the major Euro ma European markets already. Um, priced at uh, 43,000, I think an mm -hmm. affordable uh, entry into, into this fantastic um, segment. And um, an important step following the launch that we do with the 310 horsepower this year, will follow next year a performance plug-in hybrid version at the beginning of the year. Oh, so many good news. Uh, thank you so much, Wayne. Mm. But I think, I think, uh, we're looking forward to it, but I think Marter Stegen is arriving at the Cooper Garage, so let's be good hosts if you, and we meet him, okay, Wayne? And if you don't mind, we have our masks. We're going to put them because although we are at a safe distance, it's still a smart to exercise caution. And now we were, I was with you, I was with Jordi, but now Mark will come here, so we're three of us. Look, Mark, there's there, and he looks happy with the car, eh? <laughs> the Formentor. It, it fits good to Mark Ter Stegen. <laughs> I think the Formentor fits good to everyone. Well, mm. here we have him, Mark, ¿qué tal? Hey, hey, ¿cómo están? Hello. ¿Qué tal? Me siento ahí, ¿no? How are you? Sí, sí. ponte cómodo. And welcome to yes, your second house. You. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have you here. Please let us know how is your right knee? How are you feeling? Very good, very good. Yeah, we saw you driving, getting, so... <laughs> yeah, it's all better. fine. Yeah, yeah. I was allowed already after two weeks, so it's all fine. Yeah. And how do you feel? Um, what is the feeling of a football player like um, with this coronavirus and everything, with the start of the season? It's a bit strange, no? Yes, definitely. Uh, at the beginning, of course, now we are all in a bit of a, an adaptive modus, I would say. Uh, many restrictions we have to have a look at and, and well. But this is how it is. We're going to respect them and try to, to do the best out of it. We hope to see you soon in the pitch with Hopefully. your... Con, con todos los jugadores del Barça ahí en la portería, Mark. Yeah, and too. please let us know, Wayne, Mark, because I know you're good friends now, but how did this, this relationship start? How did you meet each other? Well, I, I, I invited Mark um, a year ago uh -huh. to come and visit us, and I was really happy when he took our invitation. I was very surprised. I thought he'd be here for half an hour and we'd have a fast meeting, but he stayed half a day. Uh -huh. uh, we wow. showed him. Is it so good that, or bad? <laughs> that's good. <laughs> <laughs> we showed that's him the, our secret part of the business, so our design center. We were in the middle of design and showed him all the cars that were coming from Cooper and even allowed him uh, to drive uh, the car. So that was the beginning of the relationship. Yeah. Hey Mark, how, well, how was it driving the Formentor? I think you're the first one uh, to drive Formentor in the street. How was it? Well, uh, at the beginning when I drove it uh, in the design center, um, of course I got to know everything, I got to know the brand as well. Uh, and we were in conversation, as he said, it was such a good chat. We talked about so many things. We, we, we saw almost every project they also have and, and the objective and the passion was, was obvious to see and, and really I was like in a flow and I felt really comfortable in here. And, and well, I was, I was able to drive it by then, um, even though it was just a small round, but it was fun and, and it created something in me What I said like, okay, I really want to drive it now. When can I get the car? And, and well, now I have it. Now I just arrived at the car, so I'm, I'm re really happy. You know what I like when, when Mark, uh, when we hear him speak about the Formentor, mm. about the Cooper family, and um, he's, I cannot see your mouth, but I can see your eyes, and he, he's like happy also, and, and, and uh, we're sincero, no? <laughs> yeah, he's, I think he's a really authentic and genuine brand ambassador who's doing a great job for us. Cooper is a new brand. Mm -hmm. We need awareness, and Mark is giving us a lot of awareness. He's supporting us a lot in our marketing activities. And as you say, I think it's something genuinely enjoys driving the car. He had a Cooper Taker at the beginning. Now he has, uh, 
he drives away from here today and he's, he's from Mentor and I really hope he, he enjoys driving it. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure about this. Mark, what's your favorite feature of the Formentor? The best part? Well, I just drove it now uh, and I saw the, the real version actually. And, uh, and well, I really like the, the, the GPS and everything. So I really like to touch everything. The first one, when I came here, I was touching everything. I really like this. And, and if you have many assistants um, around you. So uh, this is what I like the most. I like the design as well. But um, yeah, it's, it's very different to, to the Ateca. It's, it's uh, a step in the future. You see this from outside, you, you feel it inside and, and it's really nice actually. And, and well, I'm looking forward also for more or less January. No, tell me something. Yeah. <laughs> um, Give us some clues. When, <laughs> when there's a plug-in uh, hybrid version. So uh, this will be also a very good step. It's also what, what Cupra really wants and uh, yeah, I, I, I really, I'm really excited to drive I it. I can see yeah. it, I can see it. And I, I, your, your favorite color is my favorite color. Well, the, the petrol <laughs> blue mat, it's, wow, it's very, very, it, it sits good on you. you can, Thank you, thank <laughs> you. Can you. Have it. It, it's not your favorite color also. Wait. It'll be the first car I drive, but I, I, I also quite like the gray. We have yeah, nine the, colors, the, the, right, yeah, in the palette? The, 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 the matte gray color that will be coming as well at launch, I like that color a lot as well. Okay. As you can see, gray. Yeah. It's in, in my color. <laughs> it's your color. Okay, so Wayne and Mark, it's, it's great to have you here live for this is a TV show, live TV yes. show, and it's great to, to have you both here. We're going to say bye bye to the members of the Cupra tribe, to the tribe mm -hmm. members, and we hope to see you in the road very soon with the Cupra Formentor. And in a few seconds, we're going to start with the QA part for our friends, our journalist friends. So see you in. In a bit. Just one second, okay? okay. Thank you. <laughs>